Hello, I'm Bo Gorseski. Today we'll be exploring Swift Playgrounds. It's an app that can be used to learn coding. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo in the lower right hand corner during the video. Also give us some feedback or check out our related videos by clicking on the pop-up cards in the upper right hand corner. Let's get started with Swift Playgrounds. Once you open up the Swift Playgrounds app, you may or may not have some courses available. You can see these are some courses that I already have in, also known as Playgrounds. A Playground is basically a container of apps and lessons that will help you learn coding. In order to get a new Playground, click on the word New Playground in the upper corner. And I would heavily encourage you to get to start off with Learn to Code 1, if you want to get a different playground than what's available, you can also get a subscription. So again, I'm going to go to New Playground. And you can see that there are multiple challenges and stuff that help you learn with the Swift language. Um, you can see on the bottom, I have two subscriptions for Parrot Education to help learning uh, to code with our Mamba drone. So I want to add a subscription. I could enter the URL if I know it, but I also want to browse the subscription. So if I want to get the Sphero one, and I have a Sphero robot, I can hit subscribe in Swift Playgrounds, hit subscribe, and who doesn't live R2? So I'm gonna get R2 by Sphero. And basically if you have the hardware, you can code with it on there. This is the Swift Playground of Learn to Code 1. If I were to hit the four squares in the upper corner, that would take me back to my shelf of all my playgrounds. If I hit this all index button. This gives me all of my lists. So you can see the green checks. I have completed all these activities. Maybe I'm going to start off with issuing commands and I want to go back and do it. You can see these are my codes undone. So if I just want to clear the screen so I can start over, hit my three dots, reset page, reset. And my goal is I need to move my character called Byte to collect the red gem. They give you the directions up top in the goal. So you tap to enter the code. And we're going to move forward. I have to move three times. Move forward, move forward, and then collect gem. When I hit run my code, and there it's done. You can try it again by hitting the play button. You have that little clock here. Maybe you want to go through the code and you can see which one's doing, how fast it is. As you create this, you can also hit three dots. There's always a great help. There's a help button in the corner, and you can also hit the check mark if you ever get stuck. Glossary. Uh, you can take a picture if you could send to your teacher if you get stuck. You can also record a movie. You can even broadcast it live. So think about the ways you can share people how you are coding and how to do it. As you advance through the course, you're going to see that basically Swift is like a game. Each level gets a little bit harder, and it's built upon your skills that you learn from step to step. And your goal is typically to collect gems or toggle switches. See, perhaps you're worried and you don't know how to code and you're going to have to teach it to the students. Don't worry, there's a great iBook for that. Go to your iBook store and just look up Learn to Code by Swift. Here's a couple books of Verity and it's a teacher guide but it has great resources for you and the students. It takes you through each lesson where you are. Uh, it's just a great way to kind of teach you and the students some of the material. They have presentations, they have everything that you would need for this to get your students going through. As you advance through the Swift Playgrounds coding curriculum, don't forget to check out the Apple Teacher Learning Center. Especially if you became an Apple Teacher a while ago, it continues to update and have lots of great resources. There's an area in collections called Badges for Swift Playgrounds. And I would recommend that once you complete Learn to Code 1, try to go for your coding concepts and Swift Code Badge. Once you complete Learn to Code 2, go for the Swift Playgrounds app and coding in the classroom. And then you'll get a very special Apple Teacher Badge now that you know how to incorporate Swift Playgrounds. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and follow us by clicking on the links below in the description.